One of the most closely watched races this political season is Colorado's 6th Congressional District. And two candidates, both with military backgrounds, but very different ideas on where this purple district in the North and South Metro should be heading. In this Denver 7 Political 360, we asked the same question of both men, so you can see their back and forth on things like immigration, leadership in Washington, and on taking PAC money. One does, the other says he won't. I have been around for a long time in policy, so I have a very solid voting record. I have taken a pledge very early in this campaign that I'm not going to take a dime of corporate PAC money. They also differ on the two big issues voters ask about. You know, health care is the thing we probably hear the most about. People are paying way too much for health care. There's still a lot of folks who don't have quality, affordable, accessible care. We have to solve this problem. Making sure that we honor uh, our obligations to the men and women who made uh, tremendous uh, sacrifices uh, for this country. I think probably the, the, the second biggest issue is, is fixing our, our broken immigration system. We need to make sure that we have secure borders. We need to make sure that we have policies that will, that will grow our economy. And we, make, and we need to also make sure that we are compassionate in keeping families together. So the other issue? Uh, it's, it's about corruption and campaign finance reform. There is a larger view right now in the community, and it's accurate, that our career politicians and the people going to Washington have been captured by lobbyists and special interests. On the subject of immigration, we asked if ICE should be abolished neither gave a flat no. We need to fix our broken immigration system. It, it, needs, it desperately needs an overhaul. But the, we'll, whatever direction we go, we will have to have an enforcement mechanism to it. And so whether we want to call it another name or whatever we want to do, we're going to have to have enforcement uh, mechanism there. Approaching it at the ICE level is not the right way to approach it. I think we need to hold ICE accountable for its policies, and we need to hold the administration accountable for its policies. Both men talk about creating change in Congress. So we asked what they change about their party's platform and leadership. Well, we need new leadership, right? I've come out and I've said I'm not going to support the current leadership of the, the party. I think it's really important that we change the culture of Washington, right? We need a new generation of leadership that's going to come into Washington and say enough is enough. You know, this partisan bickering and fighting and the back and forth and the political gamesmanship that happens on both sides of the aisle. Democrats do it and Republicans do it. Uh, I, I have had enough with that. We've seen the dysfunction that that creates. What has to occur, in my view, is a change in the, the culture of the House of Representatives. I'm in a, in a bipartisan working group called uh, uh, Problem Solvers. We have a series of reforms that I think are very important uh, that um, would say if there's so many co-sponsors on a bill, a leadership from either party can't block it from coming to the floor for a vote, that we, that we want to undo this restrictive rules process that doesn't allow amendments on bills on the floor, and we want to give every member of Congress the ability to have a vote on a bill in committee. Both admit they're not proud of what their leaders are doing in Washington. I'm, I'm certainly not proud of this administration. Uh, you know, Donald Trump uh, and his policies um, have taken us down the wrong path. Uh, you know, a lot of his policies, in my view, are immoral, uh, and we need to have a Congress that's willing to step up and push back and truly hold this administration accountable. What we need to do, and, and my bipartisan group is involved in this, uh, is to, to force changes in the process. We, uh, Republicans and Democrats together in this, the Problem Solvers Group, are, are planning a, a major push by virtue of not allowing the nominee from whichever party has a majority to be seated as speaker until we get these rules changes. And you can hear more of our interview on all our streaming platforms and on the DenverChannel.com.